Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're finally gonna learn how to scrape. It's easy, you just uh, you take something, I have a plate and a fork, and you just kind of rub it back. And, oh my God, that is so awful. Oh, <laughs> what have I done? Oh, yep, that was my joke about scraping. Okay, for real, let me get this plate out of here. We're actually gonna start our web scraping in this video, and we're gonna use something called Beautiful Soup. So Beautiful Soup is a library a package we need to download. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. And it kind of drives me insane, but the name that we actually download is called BS4. Not Beautiful Soup, but BS4. In our command line over here, we run python-m pip install BS4. And I already have it installed. Requirement already satisfied. It should take a moment for you assuming you have your internet running, and then you'll get the package. Okay, now that we have Beautiful Soup installed, let's talk about what it is and what it isn't. It allows us to navigate through and extract data from HTML using Python, but, and this is a big, big but, it does not download HTML for us. We have to manually make the request to get the data. Let's say we're scraping IMDB, not saying it's a good idea to do that, but if we were, and I was, I don't know, scraping every single web page I could find, spacing out the request by three seconds. I would use the request module to send a get request to one page, get the data back, and then I take that HTML that comes back, I send it over to Beautiful Soup, and I extract whatever information I want. Maybe I'm trying to find links that I can crawl across and then send a further request to every link we get back from whoever, Danny DeVito's web page. And then every link we get back from Danny DeVito's page, we're then going to further scrape and keep going. Anyway, my point is that Beautiful Soup does not download the HTML. So in this video, we're just going to begin with mocked HTML in a variable. I've created a variable called HTML equals, and then I have a multi-line string where I've just put HTML inside of there. Very basic. It just says, you know, title, first HTML page. We have a div with an ID, an H3. Uh, what with a data attribute, a paragraph, another uh, ordered list, just some basic HTML stuff. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the file and you know type as I type. So we're going to suppose that we got this back from making a request rather than it being in a variable from the very beginning. In the next video, though, I'll actually talk about making the request and then giving that data to Beautiful Soup. So where do we begin? Well, we have to start by initializing Beautiful Soup. After we import it, we call this line here to actually parse the HTML. Remember, HTML comes back as a giant string. It, just like what we have here, this is how it comes back from wherever we make a request. It comes back as a string. It's not an object, it's not a class or anything, not a dictionary. So we pass that string in to Beautiful Soup. As well as this string, html.parser, you have to do this because Beautiful Soup also supports parsing XML, which is another markup language. We want the HTML one. So we pass that in as well, but that's always the same for us. And then that will go and parse all of the HTML, assuming that it is correct HTML, there's no errors in it, there's no missing brackets or tags or something. It goes through and it's actually quite complex, the logic that has to happen. And if we save the result to a variable, we can then use that parsed HTML and navigate through it. So there's several ways to navigate. We can try and use a tag name. So I could parse all of it and then say, hey, beautiful soup, give me all of the paragraph tags. Give me all of the H1 tags. Give me all the anchor tags, that sort of thing. I can use a method called find, which will return one matching tag or find all. That, that will return a list of matching tags. So find one paragraph versus find all paragraphs. And we can also navigate using CSS selectors. And if you haven't seen or worked with CSS, don't worry. But if you have, we can use CSS style selectors. We can use a method called select, but let's just start with the basic tag name selectors. So first things first, I need to import BS4. And all we want from it, I'm actually gonna switch this up from BS4, import beautiful, you can spell B-E-A, beautiful, there we go, soup, like that, okay? And then we'll just make a variable, uh, let's just call it soup equals beautiful soup and we pass in this string of HTML that is called HTML like that and then we need to pass in HTML dot parser and what will happen now is that soup if we just do if we print soup and then we also do a print type of soup I run it 
the representation that is printed to us looks just like the HTML string. However, the class is not string. It is a beautiful soup. It's an instance of beautiful soup. It now has a bunch of methods that we can use. So it's parsed it, even though it doesn't look like it has when it prints it out. I promise you it has parsed it. So we can do things now like, let's do print soup dot, and then we can do dot body. So that would be this right here. And if I run it, look at what we get. This is the body. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, we can also do things like print soup dot body dot div. There are two divs in the body. Notice what happens. I run it and we only get the first div. So just be aware of that. This was the first div. It had the H3 and the paragraph in it. We didn't get this bottom div. So we'll talk about find all in just a moment. We can also do this, print soup.find and then pass in a string div. And this gives us the same thing. Also notice when it's printed out, it looks like it's a string, but none of this is actually strings. If we look at what this actually is, div and what this returns, call it D, and then let's print type of D. I run it, it's a beautiful soup for element tag instance. It's not a string, it is its own instance of, not its own object. So when we parse HTML, it's taking, beautiful soup takes that giant string and it goes through and it turns each individual tag into its own object. And then it puts them all together into the main, what we have here, soup. This main variable, whatever is returned from here, contains all of the instances of elements. Okay, so we can do find div, but we can also do find all div. And if I do that, oh, I'm only printing, let's just print D now and run it. We now get a list and the first item in there is the first object that contains the div and then our second object div. Okay, so that's finding based off of a tag name. We can do find or find all. You know, we can change this to be an li. We do find all. We get all li's returned in the list. If I do find instead of find all, we only get the first one, as you can see here. Let's make some space. The next thing I'll talk about is selecting using attributes. For example, an ID or a class. So here we have an ID on this div called first. And if I wanted to select using that, I can do soup.find, and then I just say ID equals first. And this is going to find me whatever the element that has ID set to first and retrieve it. And there we get that div. And if I move this to the second li and save, now I get that second li. Likewise, I can select based off of a class. An ID is supposed to only be used once, so you wouldn't use find all, so you shouldn't have to, but we would use find all on a class. So we have class equals special. Okay, oh, I need two S's. And if I run that, you'll see that there's a problem. Sublime is saying, hey, wait a minute, that's a special word in Python. So this won't work if I try it. It doesn't it thinks I'm declaring a class. Instead, we have to do class underscore. So that's just something you have to remember about when you're working with beautiful soup, class underscore. And now we get those two list items, class equals special, class equals special. We can also select based off of attributes, like this thing has a data attribute or data example set to yes. And if I wanted to do that, I instead, let me just duplicate this and comment that one out. The argument name is adders like this. And then I pass in a dictionary and I'm looking for where data example is and I can type colon yes. So give me all every item, every element that has the data example attribute set to yes. So if I give that to two things, let's do this, uh, yeah, this div at the bottom that says by, like this, and I run it, we get the h3 and the div. So this is how we can select based off of attributes, whether it's, you know, a, a source for an image, um, an href for an anchor tag, we can also select based off of class and ID as we saw, and tag name.